Hi all, and welcome to the video for Lesson 11. Today I'm going to be talking about bar plots, histograms, and some more plot formatting, just to get into the bells and whistles of Matplotlib. This is going to be the only video for this lesson, and it's going to be a code demonstration rather than just going through slides. So to do a code demonstration, I need a notebook and some data. In our Google Class Drive, we have our video lesson slides and notebooks. In there, I've given a Lesson 11 notebook and a Lesson 11 data folder, which has the file dissolved inorganic nutrients.csv. These things are also accessible on the Canvas page under the Class 11 module. Uh, and I really encourage you to download them to your own Google Drive and have a copy of the notebook open so you can follow along in this video. So pause, take a moment to get those things sorted out, and we'll continue on. Uh, I've loaded my dissolved inorganic nutrient CSV to my drive in my data folder, and I have my copy of Lesson 11 notebook here. So about this notebook just tells you where to get the, the folders. Uh, and then about this data tells you a little bit more information about this data. So our data is from Palmer Station in Antarctica along the Western Antarctic Peninsula, and it was measured by the Long-Term Ecological Research Network, or LTER. The station we're looking at is the Dissolved Inorganic Nutrient Station. And if you click on the link that I've provided here, you can get a little more information about that station. So there, they're measuring silicate, phosphate, nitrate, nitrite, and ammonium uh, from the water column in 1991 up to uh, 2019. I've taken a subset of this data, so we're just going to be looking at silicate, phosphate, nitrate, and nitrite. And then the nitrate and nitrite are actually going to be uh, one number added together. And we're just going to be looking from 2010 to 2019. I've done this just to make this a little bit more condensed of an example. These nutrients are really important uh, for phytoplankton growth and understanding the ecosystem in the ocean. So it's really great to have these concentrations and to sort of be able to study these things uh, in, in understanding the ocean. So let's start with our coding demonstration. I've preloaded our, our import statements. So we have NumPy, because we're going to be using some NumPy functions. Uh, we have pandas because this is a CSV, so we're going to use it to read our CSV. And we have matplotlib uh, to, to look at our plotting, of course. This is also a time series, so it's good to import date time. Uh, and finally, we want to mount our Google Drive. So from google.colab, import drive, and we say drive.mount content slash drive. So when you run this cell, a lot of times you'll get a URL. I've already mounted my drive, so it says that. But uh, you just follow the URL to get your authorization code. So now that we've mounted our drive, we can get our file path. In here, you go to your file management, and we go drive, my drive, and then data folder is where I'm storing it. So I'm going to copy that path and say folder path equals what I just copied, and I'll put a slash at the end of it as well. Now I also want my file name, and in this case, my file name is dissolved in organic nutrients.csv. So now we have where our file is in our file name, so we can load our data using pandas. And we say data equals pd dot read csv. And we want to read from our folder path plus our file name. And we're going to display our data. And we're going to get a little more information using describe. So data dot describe. So when we run this, we get the full table printed out. And you can see we have our date times, latitude, longitude, concentrations. Uh, these date times look like a date time, but they're actually a string. And the way to fix that is to actually use another argument in our read CSV of parse dates. And we give it the column that we want to parse, and that would be column one. When we look down at our describe here, we can see all of our information. And what I want to point out is that the minimums are negative 999 for our concentrations. And what that tells me is that it's a NAN value. And we can also fix that with another argument saying NA values equals negative 999. So what that's telling the code is that anytime you find negative 999, just put a NAN instead. So if we rerun this, you can see our date times still look fine, but now they're actually date times. And our value is no longer negative 999. However, you will see that this one is still a negative number as our minimum, which means we have to do a little bit of data cleaning because there's no such thing as a negative concentration. So let's go ahead and clean the data. And we're going to start by just selecting out that column. So data of if you remember in pandas, you can select using your column name. So you have that. And we're going to just set that equal to a variable name, nitrate. So now I want to find where in the column nitrate is negative and where it's positive. And I just want the positive values. And I want the negative values to be NANs. And I can do that using the where function. So I say nitrate dot where. And I only want to select the data that is positive. So I say nitrate where nitrate is greater than zero. 
And what that does is it just selects all of the numbers that are positive and makes anything that is less than zero negative. So that fixes our negative problem. And we just want to replace in our original data data frame uh, that column with our fixed column up now. So we just set that equal to that. And now if we say data.describe and run this, you can get that that value is no longer negative. Another thing you'll notice in our original table here is that we have repeating dates. And that's because we have different depths measured on the same day. Uh, what if I said, I don't really care that much about the depths. I just want to know the average of what was happening on that day. Well, you can do that by grouping and averaging the dates. And you, you do this using the group by function. So you say data.group by, and you give it the column name that you want to group by. And in this case, I want to group by date time GMT. So I give it that column name. And I say, I want to take the average of those groups. And we'll give it a variable name, clean data. So now if I display clean data, you can see our new data frame. And you can see that now the date times are our index for this data frame. And notice that there are no more repeating values. And all of these are the average value for those days in the original file. So these are the values that we're going to be working with for our plotting. And let's create variables for each of the nutrients uh, to make it a little bit easier for us. So we're going to say p is equal to clean data of that column name, which is phosphate with micromoles per liter. And the same thing for s is going to be clean data of silicate with micromoles per liter. And then finally, n is going to be clean data of nitrite and nitrate with our micromoles per liter as our column. And then we also want our dates. But in this case, our dates are the index for this data frame. So we say dates is equal to clean data dot index. So that has now selected out each of those columns. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these all into NumPy arrays using the values attribute. So I say dot values, and now all of these are going to be NumPy arrays. So I run this, and now I can start my plotting. So this one, I'm going to plot one figure with one axis with multiple lines on that axis. So fig is equal to plt.figure, because we just want one figure and one axis. And I'm going to give it a fig size of 10 by 10. Now we can put those lines on top of our figure. And we're going to do this as a time series. So we're going to use dates as our x and each of these concentrations as our y. So we say plt.plot dates of comma p. And we're going to make it o's on a line. And we're going to call the color fire brick. We're going to do the same thing for our uh, silicate and our nitrite slash nitrate. So silicate, nitrate. And we're going to change our shape to squares and stars. And we're going to change our colors to medium blue and dark green. So we run this, and we get something that looks like this, with all the lines plotted on top of each other. We're missing a couple of things. We're going to format our x labels, so plt.xlabels. And that's going to be our dates. And we're going to say our y labels, y label. And that's going to be our concentration in micromoles per liter. And our title, that's going to be uh, inorganic nutrients. So we put those things on there. I'll also add a grid saying plt.grid. And something you'll notice about this figure is that we can't actually tell which nutrient goes with which color. In order to do that, we need a legend. So to create a legend, the easiest way is just to say plt.legend. And you give it a list of whatever legends you want in the order that they were plotted. So we plotted p first, and then we plotted s, and then we plotted n. And you can see that order here, p, and then s, and then n. So if you run this, it'll now put a legend with the proper markers and proper colors responding to each label. However, if you for some reason got that order wrong, it would mislabel your data. And you don't necessarily want to do that. So a better way of doing a legend than just putting it in there is actually to put your labels in your plot functions. 
So you should plot label is equal to P. And for each of those, you can do a different label, P, S, and N. And now, in order to do a legend, you say PLT dot GCA. And what that does is it gets the current axis. It gets the axis in which you're plotting, and it takes all of the lines that are on there. And you're going to just say dot legend and another empty parentheses. And what that does is it infers from our functions the labels that should be going in there, P, S, and N. The nice thing about this is that now we can change the order of this, and it maintains our uh, correct markers and colors. Another thing you'll notice about this figure is that our phosphate is quite squished. Uh, and if you want to change your Y scale to a logarithmic scale in order to look at it a little better, you can do that. And you just say plt dot y scale, and you feed it log to make it logarithmic. Now you can see our face phosphate is not quite so squished, and you can see a little bit more differences here. And you'll also notice that our legend moved over down to this corner. That's because it has an auto location function uh, that says this is the best spot for it to not run over any of your data. So this looks pretty good. It's a good figure. And the last thing we want to do is save it. And we can do that by saying plt.savefig. And we want to give it the folder that we're saving it in, or folder path. And we want to give it a name. And this one I'll call line plots. And then we want to give it whatever kind of extension that we want to save our figure as. In this case, I'm going to save it as a PNG. But you can also save it as a JPEG or a JPG or a PDF. Now, a lot of times PNGs tend to be slightly bigger files than JPEGs, but smaller files than PDFs, and a little bit higher resolution. You can manually set the resolution by saying DPI equals 200. And you can do that for both JPEGs and, and PNGs. PDFs tend to be pretty high resolution anyways, um, but bigger, bigger files. So we run this, and we have saved our figure. And now if you look, you can see line plots just popped up. And that's because we saved our figure. So this is great for getting our time series. But what if we don't really care that much about the time series as much as just the average values comparing each of these concentrations? Let's start with a little bit of statistics on our concentrations. Let's just get the averages. So p average is going to be equal to np.nanmean of p. And what that's saying is just take the average without considering the nans. We're going to do the same thing for our silicate, s average, nan mean of s and our nitrate nitrate with n average and n mean of n. We also want to do the standard deviation. So we're going to say p standard deviation is equal to np.nan spd of p. And we're going to again do the same thing for silicate s std with nan std and uh, n std equals np.nan of n. So that just does some basic statistics in order to look at the overall averages and things like that. So let's go ahead and use a histogram to look at these kind of things. In this histogram, we want to do one figure with three axes using subplots. So let's create our figure. Fig comma x is equal to plt dot subplots. And we give it the number of columns. In this case, I want three columns and the number of rows, which is just going to be one. And we'll say fig size equals 14 by 10. So now we want to actually create our histograms. And we want to do it on each of the axes objects. Now, this is just one object here, but it has three axes objects embedded in it. So to call the first one, we say x brackets 0 dot hist. That's our function for a histogram. And we say x is equal to p, or x is our phosphate. And we say our color equals firebrick in order to keep with our original color scheme. Now we can do the exact same thing for silicate and nitrite, except we just call change the axes that are being called to axis 1 and axis 2, and we change the variables that are being plotted, as well as our colors, medium blue and dark green. So when we plot this, you get an error because I missed an S. When we plot this, we get something that looks like this. And it just shows the number of times that a certain concentration happens in our data set. Now, you can customize this in a lot of ways. But you, one way that is that you can add the number of bins. So let's say that there are 20 bins in each of these 
data sets instead of just the number that they that auto default. So it creates a few more bins. You can see a little bit more shape to these things. You can also change the width of these bars so that there's a little bit more space. And in order to do that, you just say R width or relative width. And we're going to say 80% of what it is. And we'll do that for all of our histograms as well. So you can see now you have a little bit of space between these things. You can see the spread of them. And now we just want to do all of our labeling, which in this case, we have x0 dot set x label. And in that case, it's a concentration in micromoles per liter. Now notice that we did set x label, and that's because we're calling it from this axis object. We're going to do the same thing for our y label, set y label. And that's going to be just a count, right? Because it's the number of times that that concentration happens. And that's going to be the same for each of the different axes. You just need to change which axes is being called when you copy and paste. So you run that, and now it has our different x and y labels. So now let's go ahead and add titles to these. And let's say x0 dot set title. And this one is phosphate. And we'll copy and paste that down to the others, changing the axes that are being called, so axis 1 and axis 2, for silicate and nitrate nitrite. So if we run that now, we should have our titles on our figure. And it looks like that. Now, what if we want to add a line where the mean is for each of these histograms? Well, we can do that using plot. And we say x0 dot plot. And if you remember, you can just give it two points. So we want pav to pav as our x. And we want to start from 0 and go up to about 110 for this first one. And we'll plot that in black with a line width of 2. And we run this, and you can see it puts a vertical black line on this figure where the mean is. But you'll also notice that it pushes this uh, limit up. And we don't necessarily want that. We want to change this. So what if we now change our x our now change our y limit? x zero dot set y limb, and we set it from zero to the top of our line at 110. And you can see now our line is right up against the top. So let's do that for each of our subplots, changing our axes that are called. And for this one, we're going to make it only go up to about 80 because it doesn't quite go that high. And we're going to plot SF instead of PF. This one, we're going to plot N. And it's OK going up to 110, but it has to be on axis 2. And there we have our average values plotted onto our histograms. What if we don't actually care that much about the spread of these things, but we just care about the average value? Well, we can take a look at those things compared on one plot using the bar plot. In this case, we're going to create one figure, fig equals plt dot figure. And we're going to say a fig size of 10 by 10. And now we're going to create our bar plot. So to create a bar plot, the function is plt dot bar. In here, we're just going to give it three consecutive numbers, 0, 1, and 2. We'll be changing those to the concentration names later. And then we give it our average values. So p average, s average, and n average. And then we want to keep our color scheme. So we give it a list of colors of fire brick, medium blue, and dark green. So when we run this, we get something that looks like this. And you can see these are our different average concentrations, with phosphate being really low and silicate being quite high. So let's put a little bit more labeling on this and format our ticks. So in order to label our ticks, we just want a tick at 0, a tick at 1, and a tick at 2. In order to do that, we say plt.xticks, and we give it those numbers. And when we do that, we see that those ticks disappeared down just to 0, 1, and 2. And now we want to change the names of those, x tick names. 
equal to plt dot get the current axis gca and we're going to set our x tick labels and give it the labels we want so this one is phosphate this one is going to be silicate and the third one is nitrite and nitrate so we run that and you can see it's effectively changed those things now we can also set a few more parameters and even rotate and change the font size of things by saying blt dot set p which is just saying set this parameter and we're going to set x tick names and we're going to give it a rotation of 30 degrees and a font size of 12. so when you do that we get this rotated labels here finally you can also put on your axis labels so plt.x label is going to be our nutrient and plt.y label that's going to be our average concentration in micromoles per liter and here we have our labels now now, this plot is OK, but you can't really see much of what's happening. It's not very clear. One way to make it clear is to put grid lines, plt dot grid. But instead of putting x and y, let's just put it on the y axis. So axis equals y. And here you can see it just puts these horizontal lines, makes it easier to see. Another thing we can do is actually add text to these in order to distinguish them from each other and put the average values on there. So let's go ahead and do that. We say plt.text and we give it the x coordinate that we want. So in this case, we want a zero for our phosphate and we want a y coordinate. Let's go with three. And then we put the text that we want to put on there. So I'm going to put the average value, average equals, and I'm going to make the average value rounded for our p to two values as a string. And I'll put my units as well. And if you type that in, you can see it's typed it out there, but it's a little bit off center. And one way that you can change that is to say horizontal alignment equals center. You can also change the font size to 16. And you can see how it changes that number there. Now, if we would make this just a little bit wider, We'll add a little bit more text inside of these boxes here. So let's add one for silicate. And we'll put that at one for our X and maybe 40 for our Y. And then we'll put one for our nitrite nitrate. And we'll put it at two and 10. Great, so those look okay, but these aren't terribly clear. So you can also change the color. And we'll go ahead and do that. Color equals white for both nitrite, nitrate, and silicate. Great. The one last thing that I want to show you guys is that you can put Y errors on this or like an error bar. And that's why we calculated our standard deviation. And you can do that when you do your plot here. You can say Y error or Y E R R as our errors. And you just give it those values of P standard deviation, S standard deviation, and N standard deviation. You feed it that, and you can see it puts these error bars on there uh, in order to get a better idea of sort of the range of things. Uh, last thing that we want to do is save our figure. So we say plt.savefig. And I'm going to, again, save it in our folder path with a file name of barplot. And I'm going to save it as a PDF instead. And you can run that, and you can see bar plot now pops up as a PDF. That's it for your uh, plotting histograms and bar graphs. Uh, we'll talk about this more in class, where I will see you on Tuesday.